Hello friend and welcome back to Farmer's Wife Homestead. Today is Vlogmas Day 3 and we are following on from yesterday's video and making up the dry mixes. So we're going to have a little play around and make sure that all the recipes are all good, which they should be because they're tried and true recipes that I've been using for years. But it'll be interesting to see how the dehydrated onions and carrots go. So enough of that and let's get to it. It's the same as yesterday, I've got everything laid out and ready. I've got um, all the extra ingredients that I need that are, you know, the wet ones like the vanilla essence, butter, eggs and I think that's about it and water. Um, got my cups again and my big bowl. Right, um, I think we will make the pancake mix first. Okay, so I made sure that I've put the oven on preheating 180 fan bake um, and we will adjust that as we need it for the recipes. So, have the pancake mix here. As you can see, I've written everything down on the jar. So we need two cups of this mixture. This is a half cup. one egg and then I'm just going to whisk get a rough whisk get any lumps out now I'm just going to add a splash of vanilla my vanilla is not ready yet so I have to use essence. Later on we might um, have a little sniff test and see what it's like after two days. Um, we made vanilla extract on the first Vlogmas day. And I'll link that at the end of this video if you want to watch that. So this is the consistency you want. It's on the thicker side, it's like paint. I might actually just add just a tiny bit more. Literally an extra tablespoon. It will thicken up as it sits here as well. That's good. The thicker the mixture, the fluffier the pancake. That's the secret. So um, if it's not quite thick enough, I'll add some more. But as I said, that will thicken on standing. So that's basically ready to cook off. And I'll do that off camera and then show you the results later on. How quick was that? Super easy. So as I said, it's just a convenience thing. There's still quite a lot in this jar here. That was one, one mix worth. So um, I'll let you know how many pancakes that made. But um, just no mess, no fuss. One bowl, literally made within a minute. So nice, quick and easy. Time, time saver. Okay on to the cheese and onion scone mix. Really looking forward to this. Um, I added a little bit more parsley after I made it up. It just wasn't enough green in there and I like lots of green in my scone. Um, I'm just going to go and grab some butter out of the freezer because nice cold butter 
is exactly what we need here. Okay, so this was one mix worth. Chuck that in there. Obviously, if you don't have dehydrated onions, you just use one whole onion and you just dice it up and pop that in there. So I've got my 75 grams of butter. I've just taken mine out of the freezer. I'm just going to pop it in there and just coat it with the flour. And then the secret is to grate your butter into the mix. Because the less you handle scone mix, the nicer the scone and the better it rises. It's kind of like, treat it like pastry in some ways. Of course the butter doesn't have to be frozen as long as it's cold. you that. See the crumbles and then you're just going to quickly mix it around. I'm going to do the same with a little bit of cheese. It's going to be roughly about a cup worth. Any cheese is fine. Who can afford tasty right now, right? And see what I'm doing? I'm just getting the flour on the grater here and it just makes it not s stick and clump together. Trust me there is a method to my madness and this will give you perfect scones every single time. There's the mix there. Okay, we're going to add the water now. So that's one and a quarter cups of cold water. Just going to get a knife and use the knife just. You don't want to mix scone mixture too much. Now, you actually want quite a wet mixture. If it's too dry, you're going to get uh, dry scones. So, at the moment, this is really quite sticky. As you can see, it's like sticking to my hands. That's perfect. What will happen is that the water will continue to um, absorb the flour and that's the mistake people make is they put too much flour to water and then the flour has no more water to absorb. I don't know, that's, that's my theory, that's the way I've done it for 20 odd years and works every time. We will add a little bit more flour when we go to shape it on the bench. So we'll do that now. Just add a little bit of flour to the bench. Is already dried out a lot more so if I'd added more flour back then it would be a dry squad mix so you're basically just wanting a little bit of flour just keep it I'm sticking
try and get the disc around about the same thickness about one centimeter I can't see You can get a glass or a cutter, it's up to you, and just cut out. Bring this mixture together. Like I said, don't knead it. The more you handle this dough, the tougher these scones are going to be same size again and of course depending on what size glass or cutter you have it's going to determine how many you've got there's the the Cox one there we go that's given us 12 scones. Now I'm just taking some plain milk and just brushing the tops. You can add a little bit of cheese onto the top if you want. Um, I don't because there's plenty enough cheese on the inside. It just gives it a nice golden top. And this is going to fan bake at 180, which is basically 200 bake. And they're going to bake or fan bake for roughly 12 minutes, but I'll keep an eye on them at 10. You just want them nice and golden. Okay, now we're going to move on to the chocolate chip cookies. Now, the only thing with this is that you're supposed to cream the butter and the sugar. So I've softened the butter, which is, um, let's just have a look, uh, butter, 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 150 grams of butter, and so I've softened that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the chocolate chips out and then take the sugar part out and pop it into my bowl um, and then whisk that together. So I'm going to give that a go. I personally haven't made the uh, the cookie jar in um, in a you know in a recipe like this before, so we're going to try it together. Um, going to troubleshoot if we've got any problems, and you know I'm going to show it to you all. That's the thing with me is um, show you the good and the bad. You know we'll learn together. There's uh, no editing the mistakes out here. <laughs> Actually not that difficult to do because everything's compacted down really well. Sure Doesn't matter if we get a couple of chocolate chips in the sugar. Perfect. So as you can see, the majority of that out. And we're just going to pop. because remember we've got the white sugar as well a little bit of fiddling around but still by the time you do all this it's still way way faster and way more convenient okay so 150 grams of the butter now you could use your kitchen aid I've got a Kenwood but I'm just going to uh, use a bit of elbow grease because who can put up with the noise, right? I'm just going to give this a really good buzz. Nothing like giving my flatty arms a workout. Can't hold the bowl because it's just too heavy for my back. see how whipped that is. That is perfect. I'm going to 
ouch, I'm gonna add some vanilla essence. Because my extract's not ready. Alright, to get that a mix. Now we're gonna add the two eggs one at a time. I'm gonna beat in between. You can see how yellow my free range eggs are. Sorry, this bowl's quite heavy and it's actually hurting my back, so I can't keep picking it up. I hope, I hope you can see that. Next one. Combine well. Right, remember when I said to you yesterday when we were preparing these that, you know, flowers are, are dependent on humidity. Oh, that, focus, is actually good to the touch. It's, so we don't want it too dry because then you're going to get a dry cookie but I will add just maybe two tablespoons more flour remembering also that it will absorb the flour as it sits there don't be afraid to to work with your mixers A little bit more. So that's an extra quarter cup. Okay, little trick I use is put a couple of drops of water on the bottom of your tray. You don't have to waste any oil and that sort of keeps this in place a lot better. I've got myself a cookie scoop. Well, an ice cream scoop. And I'm just going to pop them out like that. This ensures that each cookie is the same size. Right, the cookie dough made 18 cookies and they're going to be really good sized cookies so if you made them smaller, uh, if you don't have an ice cream scoop you can just scoop out tablespoon amounts and you can make more of them. Um, you can also freeze the cookie dough balls as is, you just flash freeze them and then pop them into a snap lock bag afterwards and then that way you've always got cookies. But um, we're going to make a video of that shortly. Okay, so now I'm just going to make up the double chocolate chip Christmas cookie. All right, and I'll do that off camera because you don't need to see me make basically the same recipe again.
Right, here's the first batch of chocolate chip cookies. Uh, super hot. But as they cool, they become yummy and chewy. All right, so just the last recipe left, which is the carrot cake. Looking forward to trying this because, as I said, I haven't tried the dehydrated carrot, but I was really um, curious as to see if I could make this even more shelf stable by um, having the dehydrated carrot. So we'll give that a go. I may have to tweak it a little bit, but live and learn, don't you? So that was vacuum sealed. That's still there. So we'll tip the entire mixture. In along with two eggs and half a cup of either oil or melted butter or half and half of both. I have melted some butter, I like the richness of the butter. Um, I'm just shy of half a cup so I'm just going to add a little bit of oil. So I use Nadia Lim's sunflower oil and my goodness, it is amazing. It's so good and rich that I um, top my salad with just a little, little drizzle of it. No mayo, no dressings, just that and it, the, it, it's just unctuous. It's the only word I can say, unctuous. Okay, so see how steady my hand is. Pretty good. So the yellowness of my free range eggs, the sunflower oil and the butter, it's beautiful. Right, we're gonna give that a mix. Great thing about this recipe is it's everything into the one pot. I like to double this recipe, so next time I'm gonna make double the amount. I didn't have any more carrot, dehydrated carrots, so I've just made a single one. Um, it just makes a little bit of a thinner cake. Still that way. Okay, can you see how yellow that mixture is? Okay, so I think that that is wet enough, um, taking into consideration that the carrot will rehydrate I don't know. I think I'm going to put a tablespoon of water in. Just to compensate for that dried or dehydrated veg. Ah, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Here's the double chocolate Christmas cookie. Tell you what, my kitchen smells amazing. So this is a springform pan. I'll just try and get the size for you. It is a 23 centimeter. So the trick is part like that. Get your sheet of baking paper, fold it in half and then in half again and then into a triangle. Sorry, can you see? There's the middle edge again and then over again that is your point. So you get it around about halfway and then you just tear it or cut it sort of in a okay so does that give you an idea? And then you pop it down like that, and there's your circle. Then you grab this, 
pop it on top tight boom perfect My back's too sore, so I'm just gonna spoon it in. I think I must have a smaller pan because this is going to be quite flat. <laughs> a double batch of that. Okay, we're going to pop this in the oven 180 fan bake. Oh, I'll probably, probably put it down to 160 fan bake. Alright, now that's everything baked except for the carrot cake, so that's in the oven and that will cook um, probably only half an hour because it's, like I said, it's going to be a bit of a flatter cake. I must have um, a spring form pan that's a little bit smaller than that because when I make it in that one it's a little bit thicker so but that's all good still going to taste the same um, but as I said double the mixture and you'll have um, a much thicker cake uh, you could always put it in a loaf pan as well and then um, glaze it with the cream cheese icing which um, I will make shortly as well um, uh, all of the recipes, the full recipes are on the website um, and I will also link them below in the show notes. So yeah, we'll just wait and I will bring you back once everything's cooked and we've laid it out on a lovely little platter and um, family will be happy today because they're getting lots of treats. Okay, see you soon. Chocolate chip. Double chocolate chip Christmas cookie. Scones, carrot cake. Sorry, the lighting is not the best, and the pancakes. Right, and there you have it. Lovely dry mixes made up into each individual recipe. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with them. The dehydrated onion tastes just fine. I prefer fresh onion, but it still is a lovely onion hit um, and the texture is fine. Uh, the only thing I would change about the scones, and like I said, I've made these a billion times over, um, is I made them too, too thin. So I thought it would be around about a centimeter. I would do a couple of centimeters. Um, they're just a little bit thinner for my liking. Uh, the carrot cake, as you can see, um, is on the thinner side like I said it would. But if you doubled that recipe, it'll be double that size. Other than that, it's pretty good. I will cut into it and just have a test taste to see um, what the dehydrated carrot's like as well. And then um, we've got our pancakes. Um, you can obviously eat those whichever way you would like. So let's cut into this carrot cake. Texture looks pretty much the same. Can't tell the difference. It's just as moist. Lovely. I'm really happy with that. Alright, thanks again for joining me and um, hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.